In this part of our machine learning project or data science project, we're going to understand the numerical features and then we are also going to combine the numerical features and the categorical features so that we would be able to understand, at least for now, the relationship between them and the numerical attributes in proportion to each of the entries in a certain categorical feature or column. So first, what we will do is that we're going to get the statistical summary of the numerical features. So what we will do here is that we are just going to include a number to include all the numbers of integers we have in our data set. Like for example, we have the INT 32 or 64, and then we have also the float. So let's execute this. And so here, we have now the results and let's have these numerical features so we have the customer lifetime value the income the monthly premium auto the months since last claim the month since inception the number of open complaints the number of policies and the total claim amount so here we could see that we have 8099 of course that is expected because in our preliminary understanding of the data quality we don't have any null value so we have this 8099 for all of them now then we have the mean so this is the mean of the customer lifetime value then this is one for the income so which means to say that the average income of our clients is 37,843.54 and the mean value for each client is 7,981.27 and also for the month since last claim, this is the, the average months since the last claim of a certain client, which is 15.07 months. So that means if we are going to translate this one into year, this is 1.3 years. And this one is the month since policy inception, 48.15. And the total number of policies for each client, the mean or the average one is 2.96 and the average total claim amount is 31.46 and here we could also see the standard deviation then we have the mean then we also have the 25% the 50% which is actually the median and this one is the 75% so this mean 25% the 50% and the 75% the max and the mean here these are the five number summary so the maximum is for the customer lifetime value is 83,325.38. So that's actually a big one. And the minimum is 1,891. And as you can see here in the number of open complaints, there are zeros. And this is actually very much suspicious. It's because the max that we have is five. And as you could see the mean, the 25%, the 50% and the 75% is or are zero so that means something is really wrong with our data and this could mean that there are actually a lot of zero values and so we could not properly identify the statistical description of the number of open complaints so the best way to do this is to remove all the zero values after that we're going to get the numerical summary or statistical summary. So let's first count the number of zero values we have. So let's execute this. And so as you could see, we have 6,413 zero values. And that's actually a lot. And the false one is 1,000 or those that are not zero values are 1,686 rows. If I am an agent or Business analyst in the company, would I be happy if we have these numbers or values for the zero rows in our data set? So, in comparison to those that don't have any complaints, we only have 1,686. So, that means not that big complaints we have. So, I think we should be happy. But to think that it is 1,000, so let me get the percentage of this. Our complaint is 26.29% of the total number of customers. So that means it's actually very much big. It's higher in contrary to what I have earlier said. I think the best thing that the company would have to do is that 
they should lower this number of complaints in the coming months or maybe next year. So let's get the numerical summary. So let's execute this one. So here in this case, we have already dropped the zero uh, rows. So now we have the 75% is three and the minimum to 50% is one. The standard deviation is 1.12. And the mean is for 1.686 is 1.87. Actually, a lot. That is almost two. Now, we're going to group by our data. So as you could see, this one is categorical feature. And this one is the numerical feature. And of course, we're going to sort the values by income. So let's execute this now. Okay, so we have this coverage premium, basic, and extended. And what we do here is that we group our data based on the income of our customers for those who have the premium policy, the basic policy and the extended policy. So the mean income of those who have premium is 38,942 and for the basic one is 38,380 and the extended is 36,430. So as you could see, there is not much great difference between the premium and the basic which means to say that we can also offer premium policy to instead of having the basic. So it's just actually a matter of marketing. So this would tell our marketing team to strategize on how to offer premium instead, instead of the basic. And of course, we do have the extended. Let's have this one. So here we're going to group the income based on the education. I think this is very much expected that the mass, those who have master's degrees and doctor's degrees would have higher income in comparison to bachelor's and college or high school or below educational level. This means that if we are going to correlate this education to the coverage, then we could possibly say that for masters, those who have master's degrees and doctor's degrees would prefer to get the premium instead of the basic and extended, um, given the fact that we have or they have this much income. So this income is actually yearly. So you just imagine 44,733 and 42,575. So with this amount, you can possibly or we can possibly as a company um, offer premium instead of basic first. Or you can also offer the basic or even extended and the premium. But of course, the marketing team would have to strategize so as to maximize the potential value that each client would give to the company. Now, let's have this one. So based on the coverage and the lifetime customer lifetime value. So let's execute this. So which one gives the most or the highest value to the company? So it is the premium that gives the highest customer value. So I think this is very much logical because the price of premium is always higher in comparison to both extended and basic. So 108,055. So this is the mean um, customer value that each of these coverage would give to the company. What about for education? Let's have this one. Which one gives the highest customer lifetime value? It's expected those who have master's degrees. In the whole high school, or below gives higher um, CLV in comparison to college, bachelor's or doctor's degrees. So this would tell you that most of the clients are really having um, high school or below educational level in comparison to those who have um, college, bachelor's or doctor's degrees. So most of our market is from this segment of the society or segment of um, educational level. So let's execute this. So based on the marital status, so it is a divorced who gives the highest customer lifetime value and followed by the married and the single. I think this is very much logical because those who have divorced marriage or those who are divorced would always give more premium to security in comparison to those who are single because, of course, they don't have husbands. They don't have wives to help them in their day-to-day -day family life or financial situation in the family.
Do you want to know more about this channel? Let's click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.